think I'm missing one more thing. Hello fellow Asgardians, I bring you today's video with glorious purpose. Hey fellow Force users and fellow superheroes, what is up? It's Jasmine, the Ahsoka Tano fan, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so as you can see, I am Loki today. Uh, these horns actually come off though, so if I do this, I could technically also be Sylvie. <laughs> I'm gonna put this back on. I had to obviously drop the green screen, as you guys could tell, because when I did a little test run, the green screen edit made my cape obviously not look green. Also, bear with me, I might kind of be adjusting this a little bit throughout because it's not the easiest thing in the world to wear. But anyways, guys, so it's time for the finale of Loki. It's finally here. Feels like it came really quickly. We saw in the last episode, um, there were a lot of things that went down. There are a lot of Easter eggs, as some of you pointed out, just things like, you know, Ronin's ship, the Thanos helicopter, and also the missing US ship, which they alluded to, which is kind of similar to their DB Cooper parallel in the first episode that we saw. There's obviously a lot of lingering questions that we were left with at the end of the last episode. The main one being who is gonna be in that castle or manor or whatever you wanna call it. I've seen your comments and I know that some of you are thinking it could be Kang or one of his variants. And I know some of you are also thinking that it could be a variant of Loki himself. And this is something I was kind of leaning towards after watching the last episode. Because if you think about it, this whole series so far has been about distractions. We've had the propaganda from the TVA, we've had the decor in the TVA, the fake timekeepers, you know, um, Miss Minutes. And usually when there is a distraction, it's trying to lead you away from something that is maybe right in front of you and has been right in front of you this whole time. And to me, the one thing that has been in front of us this whole time has been Loki or different variants of Loki and so it makes sense if he ends up a version of Loki ends up being the one that is running the TVA at the end of all of this and one of you had pointed out too that maybe um, if Loki himself is running this a variant of Loki maybe that's why he's going after all the other Lokis maybe he wants to be the only remaining variant will one of them die I know I mentioned in the last episode I have a feeling that this is kind of a, a trip a journey where only one of them might come back alive. It could be our Loki that dies and then they pa he passes Sylvie the torch and she's who we see moving forward. It could also be Sylvie that dies. I know one of you thought that. But then there's still the question as to how that will work with the whole timeline, right? Because we still have seen Loki in Endgame and whatnot. That Loki has to um, end up teaming up with the Avengers against Thanos. So if he dies here, I don't know how that will work out. There's a lot of lingering questions there. And then there's a the whole question of what classic Loki told our Loki he did to escape Thanos. He said something about how he created like a some sort of projection of himself and then ended up going into hiding. If our Loki was paying attention to that, he might have found a way to do the very same thing in Endgame. And so maybe in Endgame, he's not really dead. Or if he is dead, maybe this Loki will re-enter the timeline after that Loki dies. I'm not really sure. Um, how they're gonna do this, but they definitely have a lot of questions to answer. And guys, are we gonna see any more of the Loki variants, like Kid Loki, Boastful Loki, um, Alligator Loki, which is obviously a favorite of many people. They definitely could come into the picture here to help in the fight against the TVA. We already saw classic Loki sacrifice himself to help Sylvie and Loki. Either way, I don't think that's the last of the Loki variants that we've seen you know, whether it's in this series or any of the upcoming Marvel projects. I know one of you pointed out too that Kid Loki is supposed to be part of the Young Avengers, so we might see him again. There's also a question of Sylvie and what her Nexus event is. We still have yet to have that answer. And one of you had made a good point, which was that the, the TVA probably needed Sylvie somehow for the Nexus event. And 
it's possible that her almost dying on Lamentis is what triggered, or that was going to trigger the Nexus event, and that's why the TVA stepped in to rescue her and Loki. Because as soon as she was about to die, that's when we saw that little spike, that deviation from the timeline, right? As a side note, I find it interesting that Sylvie, for the last couple episodes, has not worn this headpiece. And I wonder if that kind of symbolizes her um, disassociating herself from the whole Loki image and kind of becoming her own person, so to speak. And what else? We still have to find out what is going on with Ravona and how much she knows. And we'll probably end up seeing her come into the void somehow and meet up with Sylvie and Loki in this castle, maybe. She seems to be getting answers on her own as well, right? And so it's not clear exactly how much she knows, but either way, she's definitely trying to get to the bottom of this mystery just as Sylvie and Loki are. And we still have to figure out what happened to C20. I mean, I know some of you guys were thinking that maybe she just died on, you know, got killed by Elioth or something like that. But I don't know, I feel as though if she were actually dead, they would have shown that. And the fact that they haven't yet means that we could still see her because they did place heavy emphasis on C20 for quite a while. So why place that emphasis to just never show her again? And B15, what role is she gonna play? Is she gonna help come to the rescue? somehow because we know right now she's sitting in that cell right yeah overall i'm excited for the finale i will say my only problem so far with the series is and i don't know if you guys will agree or not but loki is a great character but i feel as though they haven't really shown him do much this series in terms of having like a mission and making some kind of big difference. With Sylvie, they've done a great job with her because we got to see her. I know I didn't really actually like her that much in the very beginning, you guys know that. From episode four onwards, I really enjoyed that we got to see her uh, whole backstory. We got to see just what her mission is and why she has the goal of dismantling the TVA. And she's kind of broken a lot of ground in terms of character growth. And she even is the one that came up with the idea to enchant Elias. Loki, on the other hand, our Loki, I kind of feel like he hasn't really done much. I mean, he did make a friend of Mobius, which is awesome. And that also reminds me, I wonder what's gonna happen with Mobius if we'll see him again in this episode. But I would like to see him do more. Like he's not really necessarily thinking of the ideas to get people out of a certain situation. For him to redeem himself, I would sort of like to see him maybe be the one that completes the final step of dismantling the TVA. I don't know, does that make sense? I just feel like Loki is as guardian, he's powerful. And in the Avengers, we've really seen him do a lot of things, good or bad, but make big moves. And I'm not really seeing that same Loki in this series so far. It was fine in the beginning, because I guess he kind of had to be humbled and sort of knocked off his high pedestal of looking at himself as a king. And he was, for the first time, powerless in this organization, the TVA. I would kind of like to move away from that Loki that's kind of powerless and really see something powerful, something redeeming from him in this episode. Although arguably we did see classic Loki redeem himself um, at the end there of the last episode when he sacrificed himself. So I guess in a way that's kind of a big moment for Loki the character. I don't want to just see Loki character development from the other variants, even though that kind of is a unique form of storytelling. I want to see more from our Loki now, our 2012 Avengers Loki. So anyways guys, I don't want to speculate too much um but that's what i'm hoping from this episode so without further ado let's get this video rolling and let's dive into the episode and we know the title for all time always is uh the key phrase from the tva right so i don't know let's see what happens ouch <laughs> we still have to figure out what he was going to tell her Mm-hmm. Still so sad. Who the hell is in there, man? Why do they always do this? Oh! They're having all the adventures speak. That's cool. I wish they played the theme song, though. Why do they always do this where they don't play it? So are they going through time? Is that why they're hearing all the different adventures speak? Oh, so they're taking real people's voices from earth going through real earth events glorious purpose i remember that line from vision what is grief if not love persevering this deep whoa so is that the timeline 
in that loop, that circle that's um, surrounding that castle. So this castle is at the center of time. Both the center of time and the end of time. Whoa. Yeah, see, Sylvie doesn't wear this anymore. Have you guys noticed that? No. Cold. <laughs> oh, just open for them. Okay, are those supposed to be the timekeepers there or something? Those statues? There's that purple hue again. It's a lot of purple. Whoa! The Citadel. That doesn't sound good. My Clone Wars peeps, remember the Citadel? It was specifically designed so that nobody would return alive. He who remains. What? Hmm. Pretty enticing. So much for not disrupting the time anymore. Okay, who is this he? Cough it up. Spill it. See, it's so, it's interesting because Miss Minute sounds so friendly, but what she's saying is so sinister, you know? So it kind of almost, it throws you off a bit, what she's trying to do. The rings! We talked about this. So does Ravana really not know? Here's the disorienting camera angle again. <laughs> Sophie. Oh, is one of them, one of the statues knocked over? Like there were four and now there's only three. Looks like. So who knocked it over? Were they there already or something in another timeline? They knocked it over, I don't know. Or someone was obviously there before them, I think. Is it possible nobody's in this castle at the end of all, all this? I love that they think swords are gonna help. Who's this? Who's this, guys? It's not Kang, is it? But it looks too... Isn't he Kang not supposed to look human? Does it? Eating a green apple. <laughs> Always one step ahead. I love how they still have their swords out like it's gonna help them. <laughs> oh! Mm -mm. What's she gonna do? Don't trust this girl. What did he do? Oh, he told everyone, I bet you. Okay, so B-15 snuck out. So what are they planning? So I guess he and B-15 are working together then. Oh! So they're bringing all the, the Minutemen to different, like, to the timeline where, where they all, their variants existed? Sylvie's still trying. What's he gonna tell them? Oh, that's what um was in the first episode at the beginning when the guy was printing everything Loki said. So does he know about the Nexus event then? <laughs> Damn, that's messed up. Really brings up the question of free will. Hmm. What the hell is going on, guys? Only one person gets free will. The one in charge. That is kind of true. <laughs> he writes everyone else's destiny. Who writes his destiny? Girl's twisted, man. Where's she going? Prune her, man. Throw it right at her. <laughs> Throw it like javelin. <gasps> Come on, Mobius, you had one job. You had one job. Don't do it, girl, don't do it. Is she gonna self prune again? <sighs> How come they never answer the question? They always answer with some type of poetic riddle. What? Does he have any variants of himself? So wait, is he supposed to be king then? Are they gonna actually name drop? Okay. 
اثر بزرگ علاوه بر اینکه اون چقدر خوب بود او مای گاش هیز استارتینگ ا نیو اپل نو So is that the is that the multiverse event that they were talking about they're trying to prevent from happening? <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy's so weird. Eliot, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's a timeline there, though. Yeah. What? Oh, are we going to meet his variants? So that's just one of his variants that created the TVA controlled everything. Yeah, why would he? How old is he? Like thousands of years? Millions maybe? So is he saying that everything he does is to prevent the variants from himself? of himself from wreaking havoc? So he wants them to take over now. So he's saying that if he didn't do that, then one of his variants would have ruled the TVA? What's that that he's hearing? Looks worried all of a sudden. One of the variants coming or something? It's not working anymore? Yeah, I was gonna say, is the threshold mean he doesn't know beyond that? So now he doesn't know. Now the branches. Those are all the different possible timelines. But he's called He Who Remains. Does that mean he doesn't have any other variants? Anymore? Well, he really talks like a Loki, I'm not gonna lie. So he's handing them that? Oh. oh, I never considered this. They might actually, Sylvie and Loki might have a disagreement as to what to do with him. They might actually argue over this. He's got a point. Oh shit, this is getting messy. It's hard to tell who's telling the truth. Because they're both Lokis, yeah. Don't kill him now. See, this would be a nice way for our Loki to redeem himself. If he was actually right in, in um, his idea to keep him alive, he who remains, that'll be a good way for Loki to kind of have his powerful redeeming moment. Slow motion, that's not good. Is he gonna tell her what he was almost gonna tell her the last a uh, couple episodes back? Is the feeling mutual? I wanna be free? I just want you to be okay. I just want you to be okay. Oh, we knew that was coming. Oh my gosh, okay. Loki kissing himself. But where is, what's the He Who Remains guy doing? Just watching them? Is she gonna kill him? No, is that possible? <gasps> she pushed him back. Oh no. Just like that, man, she killed him. I think she's probably gonna unleash something worse. And she'll realize she should have listened to our Loki. Because, you know what? He might be telling the truth because... What if he was already one of his variants? Because remember one of the statues was knocked down? And I was saying it looks like someone was already there before them. So what if that was him? He knocked that statue down and then killed his other variant self and took that spot. So now Sylvie just killed that person. Now someone else is going to come. I don't know. There's so many branches now. That definitely does not look like a uniform loop anymore, guys. Okay, I hear you, B-15. Always. Damn, I've never seen Mo um, Loki 
this vulnerable and emotional before. It's definitely a different side to him. Wait, it's not almost over, is it? Better not end like this. I love how they don't even care about him anymore before they were trying to arrest him. So was this the Nexus event then that they were talking about? Sylvie killing He Who Remains? Or maybe they needed her to do that? That's why they had to rescue her from Lamentis? What's he gonna do? A citadel at the end of time. He's terrified. He's planned everything. Well, we need to prepare. Good to meet you. You're an Alex, right? What division are you from? Who's talking about? Who are you? What's your name? Don't tell me he doesn't remember him. Who are you? It's resetting or something? <gasps> He's there instead of the timekeepers. There were three statues of the timekeepers before. Are you kidding me? It's over? Oh my gosh, okay. So I have to see if there's an end credit scene. Cause this one might have one actually. Doesn't look like there is. But I'm fast forwarding very cautiously. Okay, wow, so. <laughs> where do we even start guys? I'm pretty sure he who remains is supposed to be Kang or Kang the Conqueror. He listed a lot of names he's been referred to in the past. Um, or the present or the future. Time works funny like that. And one of the things he said was the Conqueror. That was one of the names he's referred to. So I think that was more or less a name drop for King the Conqueror. So it looks like he's the one who created the TVA to basically prevent other variants of himself from engaging in multiversal wars with one another. And if that's the case, it definitely seems as though the propaganda told by Miss Minutes in the first episode was actually partially truthful when she was saying that if, you know, there are variants in the timeline, and then there could end up being a multiversal conflict and it's gonna wreak havoc on the universe and be chaotic and all those things. And we're kind of getting to see that in this episode. It really looks like Loki was the one that was able to see the bigger picture here and Sylvie unfortunately wasn't. And it's odd because up until this point, she's been very, I think, practical, very strategic and very methodical in her approach to things. And this was kind of the one time where she definitely slipped up and just was only focused on killing him, almost kind of letting her anger get the better of her. If anything, I think this whole episode just showed us that when you think something's going on and you're sure of who the bad guy is, there's a way bigger picture. I'm not even gonna say bigger picture here. I'm gonna say a whole whole damn art gallery of bigger pictures. It kind of ties into what Loki said, which is no one good is ever truly good, no one bad is ever truly bad. Look what they did, basically. You think the TVA is the big bad? We were even starting to think that too, guys. And now look, because of what Sylvie did, there's multiple versions of the TVA, or at least that's what it looked like by the end of the episode, who are no doubt gonna be fighting one another over control of the timeline. We actually saw a statue of Kang there. So it's essentially a whole chaotic, multi-universe, multi-dimensional mess. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna affect Sylvie. I don't even know what's gonna happen to her now that she killed him and now all these different branches are being created. Was this potentially the Nexus event that Sylvie was supposed to be a part of or supposed to cause somehow. They might have needed her, the TVA, for some type of Nexus event. Otherwise, why did they rush to save her on Lamentis? Because she was on Lamentis, about to die, and that's what created that branch in the timeline, and so they rescued her. Was she somehow destined to cause a Nexus event, this being the Nexus event, which is basically unleashing you know a multiverse scenario where you have multiple versions of the tva and multiple versions of kang the conqueror all fighting one another she single-handedly caused that by killing him it's just unfortunate because as you saw between sylvie and loki there the problem with sylvie is that she can't trust and that's because she was taken as a kid right and the problem with loki is that he can't be trusted because in his timeline and his story he's always kind of trying to scheme his way uh, to get more power. And so they are both alike and different at the same time. She even said, why do we not think the same on this? And I think this just showed that Lokis are definitely not all the same. It's just really unfortunate because of her inability to trust, to not even be able to trust herself, a version of herself. This is what led to this major nexus multiversal 
event um, that is now going to wreak havoc essentially. And I also think that her and Loki parting ways here, it just kind of ties in to this idea again that Lokis are destined to be alone. I do kind of wonder why Kang wanted Loki specifically. He seemed to have, or he seems rather to have an interest in Loki in general. And he did mention something about how he was looking for that one person, I think, to continue his work, but it ended up coming in the form of two people. And so I don't know, is that the reason why he was going after all these Loki variants? That doesn't even make sense if he was going after them and pruning them. It's either he has an interest in, in wanting him to rule the TVA, or maybe he wanted to try and get rid of the Lokis because they might threaten his ability to rule the TVA. But then in this episode, he seemed to take an interest in the Lokis and even offered them um, to continue his life work. And even what Miss Minnett said at the beginning, which was, you know, he, she basically offered them their lives back and everything they've ever wanted. I don't know if that was just kind of a, a ploy to get them to not confront King. I don't know. It's kind of, this episode was kind of confusing. I'm not gonna lie. Is Loki destined to rule the TVA somehow? This was the question that was asked from the beginning of the series, which is what if he ended up having control of the TVA somehow? And also, I'm kind of wondering why Kang was unable to see in time past the threshold. Um, I think that has some sort of significance in trying to figure out what it is. I don't know if that meant that variant of Kang was only destined to rule up until that point. And so I guess he knew everything that was going to happen, but then beyond that, someone else was supposed to take over. Or it's because his death was impending, that's why he wasn't able to see past that. Kang himself almost kind of speaks like a Loki, which is ironic. He kind of talks in riddles and he kind of lies a bit, which is what he did in the beginning. Like he misled them into thinking he knew everything, but then he only knew up until the threshold. There's also a scene which showed um, in the beginning, it looked like there was four statues of the timekeepers, I believe, but one of them looked to be knocked down. And I remember asking during my reaction, does that mean that someone else was there before them, before Sylvie and Loki? Is it possible somehow that there was another person in that castle, whatever you want to call it, before King the Conqueror, or perhaps another variant of himself? Um, this King that we saw in this episode somehow came and, and there was a fight causing the destruction of that one statue and then he took over. And so now that Sylvie's killed him, another version of him will take over. Or was there another Loki variant somehow that was there at one point that tried to fight Kang and, and died? I'm not sure, but I kind of wonder what that was about because there was, it looked to me like there was four statues and one was knocked over, leaving only three statues behind. And in the TVA headquarters, in the library, you can see there are three timekeepers. And even in the chamber, there was three fake timekeepers. And obviously at the end, we see just one uh, timekeeper and his name is Kang. <laughs> and then we have Ravana. We saw the whole scene with her, Mobius. She did look down at her on, on her um, table there and saw the, the three rings left by Mobius's glasses again, uh, which has played a pretty significant role. It's something that's kind of always alluded to. Is that alluding to multiple variants of Mobius or are they just implying that he's been there many times and maybe her looking down at it was just a reminder of her friend and maybe she was kind of feeling guilt about pruning him. She does mention not getting in the way of the mission, the greater mission, which kind of ties into what I was saying before, which was Sylvie was not able to see the bigger picture here. And arguably neither is Mobius. They're all just focused on the TVA. We gotta dismantle the TVA and give people free will. But what if free will never existed in the first place? And what if the TVA was actually the saving grace in all of this? Now we've unleashed multiple TVAs. If you think one TVA is bad, what about an infinite number? So Ravana saying that I couldn't let you get in the way of our mission kind of reflects that, that there is this greater picture. But I'm wondering how much of that picture she knows still because she's seemingly trying to get her own answers and get to the bottom of this. But yet with her saying, I can't let it interfere with the mission, she must know something still with that statement. She must have some type of idea of what this greater mission is. And then of course, when she left to go through the time portal, Mobius asked her where she was going and she said something along the lines of in search of free will. So where slash when is she going? We don't know. Is it possible that either her or maybe Sylvia or Loki, someone down the line is going to have to travel to the 31st century, which is where Kang was originally from? 
and kill him or maybe somehow prevent him from communicating with other variants of himself because that's what kind of started the whole mess in the first place. And will Ravana end up being good at the end of all of this? Maybe Ravana is the key. Loki might have to end up finding her. Yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot to speculate. I can definitely see why it was renewed for season two because that was quite the the cliffhanger if you want to call it that or it definitely left it open-ended. I definitely want to see this story unfold more. It was a very interesting episode. Um, it's I almost don't know what to think of it because on one hand, I really enjoyed it because it kept me guessing. And I think it definitely picked up towards the end there. But on the other hand, I think it was a little bit slow to get started, sort of. But overall, it ended pretty strong. So I would say I'd probably give it eight out of 10. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more. But yeah, you guys let me know what you thought down below in the comments as always to keep the discussion going. And as always guys, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you, um, not next week for Loki because we're finished now guys for now, but I'll see you Friday for an all new episode of The Bad Batch and until next time and until the next Marvel show guys, I will see you later. Take care. See, now I'm silly.